A lot of times I'm driving, there's nothing to do. And I shuffle through the radio before I unglue. There's a lot of red on ways, it's traffic, I'm screwed. And I'm wired a bit different than a regular dude. It's not a bad thing, I embrace it, it's true. The radio don't stimulate brain chemistry fluid. The Buddha found nirvana and the four noble truths. Through a meditative process, right action he proved. For me, I require the use of a tool, a detector, pin, pointer, shovel, and beach scoop. I'm meant to work the dirt with my history crew, but everywhere I look, my interest taboo. Most people choose Bieber over Tippy Canoe. What does a detectorist listen to when the radio is full of bad music and news? I need an alternative for me to peruse. Beyond sight and sound gets fantastic reviews. A metal detecting show where my thought bubble brews. Thank you, Josh Kimmel, for inviting me to a detecting dork out with guests like yours, true. Lee? Are you looking for a high-quality beach and sand scoop? Are you trying to take your hunting to the extreme? How about an American-based company that stands behind their product and everything they sell? Then check out our friends over at Extreme Scoops. John has been making scoops for some time now and makes a quality beach and sand scoop to take your hunting to the next level. Extreme Scoops recently released their new sand shredder that works great in the water and on the beach. And if you're a new Equinox user, you may want to check out his Surfmaster X3 that can trap those small targets you new Equinox users are finding out there. Extreme Scoops company approach is let's do it right. So do it right, buy it once, and go to the extreme. ExtremeScoops.com that's X-T-R-E-M-E scoops dot com. Hey, boys and girls. We are going to talk about S&W Shooters and Prospectors. What is S&W Shooters and Prospectors? We at S&W Shooters and Prospectors help people find treasure. Did you say treasure? Yes, treasure. Just listen to this amazing reveal from our happy customer, Jackie Sparrow. Error. Chuck was ship shape and a pleasure to deal with. I was able to buy everything that I needed at prices that were shillings less than others. I found my nine pieces of meat in no time. Savvy? I know you're asking yourself, why should I shop at SW Shooter and Prospectors? Chuck Smalley has over 45 years of metal detecting experience. He works with each customer one-on-one -on -one to customize their setup to match their skill level. So if you always dreamt of being a pirate, Arr. contact Chuck at SNW Shooters and Prospectors and he'll take a great deal for you. I pass with rum, not included. Caution. Please do not operate motor vehicles or power equipment while under the influence of this show. Listening to this show could cause side effects such as bouts of laughter, violent binges of cabin fever, and even dreams of silver and gold. Please be advised. Now that the fine print is out of the way, on with the show. All right. The fine print's out of the way. It's time to roll with the show. We're back. We're live once again. You are listening to Beyond Sight and Sound, Metal Detecting and Treasure Hunting Radio for all the really cool digging people out there. I see that Chuck's in, Detecting Addicts, Laquamette, uh, Dylan Wallendahl from the uh, Relic Hunter Group. Good to see Dylan in. Uh, man, they're just, they're coming in from all over. Chuck, Janet, uh, Bortners, I believe, the Bills. Good to see everyone again, definitely. So first and foremost, links in the chat and in the description. 
Our friends over at Shooters and Prospectors, AIP, Extreme Scoops, Detectees.com, Midwest Refineries, The Ring Finders, Nook Macro website, Legend Update link. There is also Terry Shannon's website. Can't forget his. Looks like people are definitely enjoying his books. And then there is Metal Detecting Central Illinois, Illinois, Iowa Treasure Hunters Group, Detect America, Metal Detecting Beyond Sight and Sound Facebook Group. A lot of good Facebook groups out there, as well as All Metal Militia. And then we've got All Metal Militia, Detect Ed Outdoors, Metal Detecting NYC, Crazy Spider Adventures, Ohio Metal Detecting, all on YouTube, as well as The History Digger, also on YouTube, and a new channel that we may hear a little bit about tonight as well. And then you can find Frank, Steve, and Ronnie on Mondays, 8 p.m. Eastern, over on Detect America's Facebook group, DA Live, simulcasting Facebook, YouTube, Shelly and Dawn, with Can You Dig It, Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern, simulcasting Facebook, YouTube, and we're here Wednesdays, Sundays, just on Spreaker, but we're here, we're here, uh, I don't know, who knows, maybe, maybe we'll do something something different at some point but right now this is this is where we're at 8 p.m eastern we throw the switch powers to be willing anyway and we try to get out and get some uh information entertainment or possibly even a little bit of general shenanigans and torture out to the listeners and uh you never know. You There could even be surprises along the way. Like the other week, we had uh, we had people calling in, and nobody knew who was going to get it, but somebody was getting a surprise. And in that, uh, keeping with that idiom, I guess you could say, we uh, we may be doing that again. What is it? Who will it be? <laughs> you thought I was going to tell you. Well, sorry, not the way it works. You you guys and gals, you know how this runs. So we'll have to see what happens with it. Either way, though, enough of rambling for me because I'm just, I'm wore down. I'm parched. I I need a good guest and a good talker, and I found one. <laughs> if you guys have seen the post you gals have seen the posts obviously we have the uh very very nice pleasure of having rob rizzo the history digger back with us again how is it going rob josh i i, I tell you a good guest good talker I'll, I'll try to at least uh fulfill one of those descriptions but uh i really appreciate the opportunity to come back and speak with all of these uh cool folks that are attending tonight yeah i mean uh those that were able to catch it actually got to hear you when we did the uh the live remote from galesburg very very cool of you to sit down then too for a few minutes a very very cool of you to be able to do that okay Despite the fact that, uh, for those of you that weren't aware, Josh was sporting a lime green wig, I think, during that. But yeah. That didn't dis- uh, but how you pulled that off, my friend, you know, with all of the people, the distractions and the technology, that was incredible. Very well done. Uh, we did get a few compliments on it. People were like, wow, I, I can't believe you made it seem so easy. It's like, well, uh, there, there's just, it, it, it may have looked that way, but there's a lot of voices in my head right now. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of preparation. I know you do. I, it was Abraham Lincoln had a quote. It's one of my favorites. I may have shared it before, but he said, if you have seven hours to chop down a tree, spend six sharpening your ax. I, I, I think that's right. what you do. That way you can get the job done. Yeah, Definitely. absolutely. But yeah, what what a cool event. I know you guys have talked about it and you should still be talking about it for those that were not able to attend. First of all, let me just say Chuck Smalley knows how to put on an event and that location, regardless of the event, was just gorgeous, gorgeous. 
Oh yeah, beautiful park. Definitely. And and you know, I I thoroughly enjoyed like the the entire event. For those that were not familiar with it or if you didn't catch some of the you know discussions about it, there was a meet and greet the evening before and I I, I highly recommend that if you know if you're ever gonna go to any of these events. It just like extends the fun and to be able to sit down and meet Mike Lacquement and, and, you know, Chuck to see him in person and uh, Ronnie and Frank and all the other folks. And, and, and by the way, Mike has been posting in, I've seen these in his uh, central Illinois group, these photos where he's had some pretty humorous descriptions of some of the photos he's taken during the meet and greet. And then oh, later yeah. during the, Oh my God, so much fun. Tam actually posted one over there of me with that green wig and says, caption this, and they, they were just getting a kick out of that. And my incognito disguise worked out fairly well, actually. Uh, Quarter Hoarder had been there, and I ran into him in the lobby and said, hey, glad to see you finally made it. And went on into the meet and greet, sat down at the computer to start getting things ready for the show and everything. And Chuck comes around introducing everybody. My wife's getting a kick out of it because Doug and Quarter Hoarder are both sitting there at the table just off to our left, pointing over at me, just laughing and giggling. And then Chuck come around and made the announcements. And after he did that, I had walked away for, well, Tam had walked away for a minute. And Quarter Hoarder comes up to me. He's like, man, I am so sorry. What? And he says, well, out there in the lobby, I was just trying to be nice, but I thought you were like some homeless person or something. I didn't realize it was you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So much. Yeah, so funny. And I think a lot of folks, until you get the name tags on, right, um, you know, you just might not recognize people. But I listen, I'm going to predict next year that's probably going to be double in size. I mean, if. Of course, they choose to advertise it like they did. But, you know, there's a ton of events out there. But in terms of, like, the ratio of, like, okay, what's it cost? And how much fun are you going to have? How many people are you going to meet? Is there an opportunity to learn? And, oh, yeah, you might have some cool finds. And, by the way, some prizes. Uh, I think it's one of the best out there. But I, I actually was fortunate enough to win a Fisher F44, I think it was. I've passed it on to my youngest son who was – nice. Um, he was just eager to get into the hobby. He's been borrowing my my detectors, so now he has his own. But uh, I had a great time, and the weather cooperated, right? We had a little bit of rain, but it was still pretty cool. Right, yeah. I mean, the rain held off for the hunts and everything, and that was great to see. It it did come down a little bit there for the uh, the drawings and then the, uh, the breakdown and putting everything up, but... Uh... I would say, all in all, compared to swing into summer 2017 when it monsooned that morning, uh, it, the weather was great. Yeah, and what, what can you do? I mean, and to have the different vendors there, the different sponsors, um, yeah, Chuck and Ronnie set me up too with a. I bought a new shaft for my Equinox. Um, just a little backstory: when I first got my Knox, I picked up a. Telenox shaft. I don't know if you're familiar with that. I am. Uh, yeah, the telescopic, the carbon one. It was one of their earlier designs, and you know, it 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 did for me what I wanted it to do. When I wanted, you know, when I traveled, I wanted something I could. Um, you know, you still have to take the control unit off, and you can't check that in your your bags. You have to carry that on. But I I right. wanted something else that you know smaller. But anyway, it worked fine for that. But it made that detector a little nose heavy. So, you know, right. when I was down, there, I was talking to uh, Ronnie and Chuck. Anyway, long story short, I picked up a new shaft for my Knox. It's a Steve's detector rod shaft that has a weight, a counterweight uh, above the arm cuff. Oh, and there you go, to it, counterbalance the nose. Absolutely. So, you know, I've got a new shaft on it because I think when I, you know, moved from the stock to the telescopic shaft i, I kind of screwed up that weight ratio but um anyway while i was there i picked that up and you know i mean those guys haul all that equipment all that merch with oh, them yeah. uh, pretty impressive oh yeah 
definitely. I mean, they, there was a lot of stuff there to get a look at as far as products or even purchase. And it, for for people who have never been to an event like that, it's a good way just to show up, even if you're not planning on hunting or anything, just to show up and see what these products are that are out there and available to us. Yeah, and just talk with one another, you know, yeah. what's working for you. And, you know, there were some folks who, uh, I'm, I'm primarily swinging an XP Deus 2 now, and, and, and I was, for whatever reason, I ordered a 9-inch coil. Those were slow in coming. I got yes, mine a little later than people, so... I had the opportunity to talk to some folks who had a few more hours than me on that machine. And, uh, yeah, so I think, you know, it, man, if, if, if you can do it, if you have the time, the resources and stuff, and if you've never attended a seated hunt, I, I really encourage everybody to do it. It's, I, 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 you know, for me, they are just incredible. I got a couple coming up. I'm looking forward to as well. Yeah, that's right. You do. And those are going to be some good times. Yeah, I have, um, there's, if, if, uh, let's just talk about that for a minute. If folks are not familiar with dig stock, um, they also put on some events. They've been doing so now for a couple of years. I've attended a couple of theirs in the past. And I think this next one coming up may be wrong. I think they're calling it dig stock five or four, but they have one in October up in New York and Another the following March, this is March 23. Now, is, is that back at Chesney? Yeah, the, the October one is, is in that same location, but I believe it's on property that's not been hunted previously. No, I they see. got some new, new permissions up there. And then another one in um, March, which will be in October, excuse me, in Greenville, North Carolina. So we got the October one up in New York. You got the North Carolina one in March. And I'm also, uh, so I'm familiar with those guys. They put on an incredible event, a l- little larger event. Um, I found some incredible old stuff there. And I'm also, for the first time, I'm participating in another event in February, early February, I think, second and third, with the South Carolina Dirt Diggers, I believe. That's um, That's a little earlier in the year, but... The one I'm really looking forward to, early October, I'm heading over to Colchester, England. Uh, our friend Chicago Ron puts on tours over there. And after salivating, when I hear Bill Digger Tim Blank talk about uh, some of the cool items, the gold he found over there, I bit the bullet and signed up for that. So that's happening in early October. Nice. Nice. Ron loves to hunt over there. I mean, the the history just goes so far back, and I can't even tell you the number of gold coins he's recovered. It, it, even if I could remember the number, I couldn't tell you. It'd just make you sick. Oh, listen, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to be very open-minded, uh, realize that how I detect here, you know, might not help me very much in terms of detecting over there. Right. And, you know, when you sign up, of course, one of the things they do is give you a password to this group over there that kind of hosts, the Metal Detecting Club hosts the event, and they've been around for like 30-some years, and mm-hmm. they hunt on just this massively large property. But you have an opportunity to hear about, see the things that these people find over there. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And let, let me just say, they're not Lincoln Memorials. Okay. <laughs> The the only bad thing about it, though, is once you've been over there and you've gotten a taste of it, it makes it a little hard to go out to your new permission back here in the States and get excited over a Mercury Dime or a Wheat Penny or something. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. There, there will be some, like, decompression or something like that required when I come back. I know. I know. Right. But I'm, I'm looking forward to that. But, yeah, Ron, Ron has been doing this for a while. I was um, hoping to meet him. I know we had a couple guests at the Swing into Summer event that couldn't make it. I think Ron had to work, unfortunately. He had he right. back somebody, I think, right? Yeah, Ron Ron, Ron and Gretchen were unable to make it last minute. Uh, things yeah. came up last minute that kind of threw a wrench in things. And uh, 
Same with Andy and Charlene. They they were also not able to make it. Uh, last mm-hmm. minute things got thrown into the mix. Yeah, that happens. But you know, we still had a, you know a good good event and uh, had. I was so pumped too. Several people that I was hoping to meet, I did get a chance to meet Mark Mark Hoofer and KG Gary and Penta. Ringy. Gary, of course, uh, and Deb from Mind Lab. I really hadn't spoken to her in in the past as well, and Frank, of course. But uh, Steve, Steve, Pacifico didn't make it. He'll have to. We told now for the next one, but we're going to hopefully get him there on the next one. Right. Yeah. I, apparently, uh, that green hair. Somebody had sent him a message wondering if he had made it. I think and... he. I think he had wig envy. You know, he, he wears some pretty funky hats on on the uh, DA show, so who knows? It could be. I mean, some people said I was green with envy in me anyway, and Tam apparently already has the uh, next hairstyle picked out. Oh, my gosh, so, too funny, too funny. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, but at any rate, looking forward to all those shows, but uh, Chuck, if you're still on, thanks, man. That was a phenomenal event, and... I mean, I, I and I walked home with a bunch of silver. I mean, some really cool finds too. Oh yeah, a lot of people did. It it was definitely a good time for the hunters. There's no doubt. And we saw a uh, a a handful of nice finds that were wild finds. They they were natural. They hadn't been seeded. Yeah, I was um, glad to hear that as well. I, you know, I did a, I have a brief recap of the event. I've got a video up on my page if you know anybody wants to check it out. But um, I learned after the event too, there were some rings found, mm-hmm. and I think there were a couple silver coins. And you know, it, it was a fairly large area, and there was plenty of time between yeah. the seated events to get out. You know, in, in some of the natural areas. But I mean, I, 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 I remember driving home and I was talking to amy my wife and i said this is, i'd come back here just to visit it so it was that beautiful and there's also some really cool history there it's the yes there the is town, it's the location of one of the uh lincoln douglas debates yeah yeah so plenty of stuff to you know what i mean make it a long weekend for sure but uh i, I i'm hoping you know i don't know what their plans are next year but I, I wouldn't be disappointed if it was in the same location <laughs> right yeah, I can definitely understand that. Certainly. Okay. Let's... So I have to tell you one other thing, Josh. I just got back from a trip. Um, I retired earlier this year, and the wife and I purchased a small RV. That's we've been right. Doing trip, you know, going back and forth and so on. And the, the other channel you were hinting at, yeah, apparently a, that prompted you to start a second YouTube channel. It, it did. It, it was kind of a way for my wife to also, you know, participate in some of the videos. She's, you know, always said she wants to go metal detecting with me. Um, and uh, Janet Chapman, if, if you're still on, I have I shared with her your recent comment. I said, hey, I got some folks that want to see you out there detecting with me, Amy. I'm hoping to get on. <laughs> but in the meantime... I, you know, I pulled her into some of the videos about the RV and the RV life. But what, what, what I wanted to share was uh, our recent trip. We went up to the what's called the Upper Peninsula, the UP of Michigan. Okay. Yeah. Now I live in Wisconsin, west of west of Michigan, and I've never been to the UP. You know mm-hmm. why? Well, you know, you're working, you're younger, you have limited time, and guess what? There's plenty of things to see here in Wisconsin. But right. nevertheless, we ventured up there, and I learned a couple cool things about Michigan. First of all, I'm driving through the UP, and we're seeing these signs, you know, for uh, different venues. There's uh, the 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 Uper Laundromat, the Uper Pizza Joint, and the first thing that's going through my head is, who the heck is this Uper family? Because they got their hands in everything. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know. And then I realized this is this is kind of slang. It's a nickname for people that live in the UP. They're called Upers. Okay. Right. But um, as we're traveling there, you know, we we picked up a Michigan State Park uh, sticker. They call them uh, 
a recreation pass or something there. But I did not know this, but there are several state parks in Michigan that allow metal detecting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely they are. Uh, I've been up to Michigan hunting a few times in some of them. Uh, oh, my God. As, as a matter of fact, when you were, because I assume you, you came down and around Lake Michigan. When, that, when was, you... that was originally the plan. We were going to you know, go up and over and down. And one of the things I wanted to visit was the Henry Ford Museum. Uh-huh. Just heard so many great things about it. But I'm going to tell you, we had such a great time up in the UP. We, we actually decided to come back the same way. So we just turned around and you know went a little bit west and then south. Uh, just so many cool places we saw, one, one of which was Mackinac Island. And don't know if you've had an opportunity ever to go there, but that was one of our favorite places. Nice. Yeah, there, and, there's definitely some some great scenery up there. Oh my gosh, and so much history that was just incredible. But yeah, the Mackinac Island, they they of course do not allow any motorized vehicles there, and the place is wrought with old, beautiful architectural buildings and so on. And you know, no metal detecting is allowed uh, on the island. But you never know. I mean, with the right contacts and permission, who knows? But uh, it was just gorgeous, and um, it, it it one of my favorite movies I've seen is Somewhere in Time, you know, with Jane Seymour, Christopher Reeves. That was filmed on Mackinac Island. Nice. Yeah. But, yeah, so anyway, we've been uh, doing that. A, a couple of my local metal detecting buddies, um, I want to give a shout-out, by the way, to Bruce Rakowski, the Bruce. It's his birthday today, and a, uh, I'll, I'll – and a belated happy birthday to you, by the way, Josh, as well. Well, I'm but, I'm uh, not getting any younger, but I'm trying not to get any older either. No, I hear you. But Bruce and a couple of my my buddies they they said, listen, um, we know you you know recently retired, but we we think you need to go back to work. And you know, I, I was kind of taken aback. I didn't know why they said that. And, and they said, well, because you, you seem to have less time to metal detect. <laughs> and isn't that say, funny how that happens with retirement it, it, what the heck that that wasn't supposed to happen so anyway i'm uh i'm looking for you know as much as the rv has been fun and we've had some initial trips it's going to go into storage now for a while and uh i'm looking to get back out there with the boys there you go definitely and uh recently you uh Put up on your YouTube channel, uh, the History Digger YouTube channel. I guess I should differentiate there. Uh, you got yourself a new shovel. Yeah, you know, I think if um, you, you tell me if you disagree with this, Josh, but I think if you ever meet another detectorist, right? You know, and and, and you have a lack of things to talk about. You always can kind of go to, of course, you know, what's your favorite detector? But another one is, what's your favorite digging tool and why? Right. And and I bet for most people, you know, they kind of go through an evolution of different hand tools and and different shovels. I mean, you tell me if I'm wrong. How how many have you had, Josh? Any idea? Uh, Well, back in the early days, I lost count of different, you know, hand diggers and stuff from hardware stores and department stores. And and then I went on to Les for a while and then moved on to Predator. There you go. I mean, exactly. So it's like, you know, and there's different reasons why. But I'll tell you, in my case, uh, I've got several trips coming up and... You know, as most of us know, these larger shovels, right, they're, you're, you're not going to carry them on. Okay. Right. Um, they but, don't travel but, real well. No. So you're packing these things and, you know, they're in is just one challenge. So, you know, even some of the smaller ones, I was, I bought something called a little digger, little digger it has an orange handle and it fits inside, you know, my luggage. But the problem was it was a little too short. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, very similar and and probably even the same length as like the uh, 18-inch T-handle Samsons. 
Yeah, and I think the other difference might have been, you know, what type of serration do you like on your blade? And, I mean, there's a right. lot of different, you know, choices, and we're all in different soil and different conditions. And um, at any rate, I had two things I wanted to do. I I have previously had a shovel from ExcaliburShovels.com. Phenomenal products, okay? I I had what was called, uh, I believe it was called the... Um, Sir K. And they name these according to kind of the blade type. You know, is it serrated on one end, two ends, that type of thing. But it was a one-piece unit. The Sir K has serration on both ends. For those dry summer months, it worked really well. But I also wanted something that was just serrated on one side and that was collapsible. So the cool thing about these guys, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. You can kind of customize your length, your handle type, your blade size, as well as serration type. Your serration One, preference. Everything. Your and color. Uh, exactly. Exactly. And uh, I like the product. So the first collapsible shovel I actually saw was a year ago. Nocta makes one. It's not bad. And I was surprised yeah. at how how little play there was in that one. And let me tell you, the Excalibur... You, so you was I. That's it. a very rugged shovel. I mean, i, I got to be honest, I was kind of surprised because it they seem to utilize the, you know, the two prong... It's one prong, but with two nubs, you know, that come out two holes. But I yeah, think it's more about clips. how well they machine these things, you know, to stay together. Mm -hmm. um, so I picked that up. So, you know, primarily for traveling. And, and, and here's the other thing. I haven't put it down. So even though it's my travel shovel, I'm using it now full time. And on this last trip, part of why I, I really like that, I have XP makes a back. They make a couple backpacks, but they came out with one. I'm going to say a year and a half ago, I think. But it was it's called the 240. It's the it's a smaller one. Dylan and my buddy Bob have this larger one which surprisingly you can carry that larger one on, but the, the 240 is a little smaller, a little lighter, and this collapsible shovel fits perfectly in there along with, you know, my detector and my finder's bag, pinpointer, everything. Nice. That's what it's all about, too. I mean, when you're traveling, you want to stay as compact as possible. Oh, and, and let me tell you, the type of RV we purchased is called a Class B. So think that when, when those Amazon folks come up to your door and they deliver a package and there's a, that's the kind of RV we have. Okay. It's not a big thing. Um, there's, there's a bed, there's a shower, bathroom, everything in there, but space for extra stuff is extremely limited. So, um, the fact that I can kind of shove all this stuff in a backpack is, uh, is a bonus. Yeah, absolutely. It would be. I mean, you've got to maximize your space the best you can. Yeah. I'm, I am not one uh, to get into the, you know, my detector is better than yours and stuff. I mean, it's fun sometimes to compare. But, uh, I, you know, I was actually chatting with somebody on, a, on Facebook today about um, my Knox and the Deus 2. And, and I'll tell you, they both find stuff. I mean, they're both great machines. There's a huge cost difference. But right. I will say that there's a lot of things outside of performance, weight, you know, um, does it collapse, uh, you know, the wireless technology and so on. I like to have both of those machines, but um, there's a reason, I think, there's a lot of extra things that XP offers. The fact that you turn on your Deus 2, and guess what? Your headphones automatically turn on. Right. Yeah, I did hear that about the Deus 2. I mean, little stuff like that, at some point, it starts to add up. I mean, everybody's got to be their own judge as to whether, you know what I mean, the, the um, cost difference is warranted or not. But <clears throat> And that was always kind of a, not necessarily a deal breaker, but a little bit of, uh, you know, a put off, in a sense, for the first generation Deus and the X-35s, too is that there were a number of people that were like, well, I, I thought I had my headphones off, and apparently I didn't, and now my headphones are dead, and I'm out in the field, and 
I'm going to have to charge my headphones. Oh, listen, and here, here's the thing. The flip side of a, of a benefit is sometimes, you know, um, a con. So what, what do I mean by that? So here I am on this trip up in Michigan. Oh, my gosh, I can I learn. I can just, you know, I can metal detect in these state parks on these beaches. So um, I go to my, my bag, my XP backpack, and I'm looking for the cable that you need to use to make the XP operate in water. And guess what? Oh, boy. Left, left it at home. Left it at home. So, you know, on one hand, wireless is great. But on the other hand, there are more components. And guess what? You have to charge more things. That's but, true. you know, one of the cool things I do enjoy about the XP, you know, when they provide you a charging cable, they have a dongle of sorts that have that has you know the one cord that plugs in your outlet has yeah cable. three lead cable three exactly exactly so anyway um, you know but I, I listen they both find things I I prefer my primary my go to for a variety of reasons right now is the Deus two not a bad machine not a bad machine but that's I will take both with me over to the UK. You know, I want to Yeah, you don't want to travel that far and not have anything for a backup, just in case. No, not a, not at all. But I was actually out this morning, and I did a little little bit of a different video. Uh, you know, I, I, I said, okay, listen, I'm going to find five targets. I'm starting with my XP. And, you know, for every target that I found, I marked it, and then I dug it with the Nox. Just to compare, how did they sound? Did one miss it? You know, that kind of thing. And then I did the reverse. You know, I, I went hunting with the Nox and said, oh, let's see how the XP did. And I was trying to keep it as realistic as possible. So I wasn't cherry picking targets. And uh, I basically came across some coins and some trash, one nice item. But, but it just, uh, you know, people who have never seen these things, there's a huge difference in user interface, for example. Well, and from what I've seen, there there's a huge difference. I mean... Not not just between the Deus Two and the Equinox, uh, but between the Deus Two and the first Deus. Oh, I absolutely, and I mean, I mean, I and again, I have my preferences. I mean, when I started, I think when most people start, and this is an opinion, not a fact, but I think you know, new detectorists will, will rely more on target ID and, and you know, BDI, target ID and BDI, right, and. The Nox, the, the user interface to me, for those kinds of detectors, it's superior. It's easier to understand. I think it's easier to program. However, you know, when you move over to the Deus, I mean, that screen is smaller. I think it's harder to navigate through their menu system. But, you know, the Deus kind of forced me to rely a little bit more on, on the audio. Yeah. Tone and I would say, you know, to me, the two most important things on those machines to learn, you know, is how to manipulate, you know, one calls it recovery speed, the other reactivity, okay? Right. And how to set up tone breaks. You know, yeah, so especially when, with the dais. Tone breaks are a very important aspect. You know, and if you're not taking advantage of that, honestly, you're not really taking advantage of the dais, too. No. But... And then there's not only that, but there's a myriad of different audio types. So it's, it's been interesting, as I, as I said, there's benefits of being a little late in the game. And I watched some of the early adopters kind of, you know, they came out of the gate really excited. I'm not going to name names here, but these are some of the big YouTubers, you know, who do a lot of live digs. And then there were a lot of, I'm really frustrated with the days too. I, I think there's an absolute learning curve even over the days one. Yeah, I I think the transition is a little easier for people who came from a Deus One, but there's still that acclimation period. Yeah, yeah. But uh but anyway the goal I just wanted to go out and do a short one and just it, now now that said it was, you know, ho hopefully it'll be a fun video. It was a pain in the butt to lug two machines around. I didn't have anybody with me. So um the, the folks that were driving by probably thought I was a, you know, a fruitcake out there. I'm carrying all this equipment with me. But <laughs> I, I did another video, too, which was, uh, I, for me, it was really helpful. And all I did was I picked two programs 
in my Deus II, one called the General. And I, I don't think I changed anything, didn't mess with any of the default sensitivity, reactivity, and so forth. I left it all the same. And one custom program that I developed that, um, you know, you, I discriminated or notched out a few items and I had a lower reactivity speed. And all I wanted to do was say, okay, let, let's just see how on this property, this day, the soil condition, you know, how do these two programs compare? And it was fascinating because, you know, depending on where I was, if I was deep in the woods or, um, you know, in, in a different soil type, I mean, you, you, you get to see how having the ability to it, think of it like not dirt fishing, but regular fishing. What type of lure do I use? What color, right? If you always use the same fishing lure, you're really not optimizing your, your experience. It's no different in dirt fishing, I found. But that was fun right. just to compare and learn the benefits of these different programs. Absolutely. And apparently the phone lines are working because we've got Chuck on with us. Hey, Rob. Hey, Josh. How's it going? All right. Good. How you Good doing? points, Bob. Great event, Chuck. Really appreciate it. Oh, that was fun, yeah. But great points on on learning tone breaks. That's very important. Yes, it is. And yeah. I've ran the Deus too some now, and and did some attempts on doing some changes and things like that. But uh, I'm not a overall Deus fan. Tell me why. Well. <laughs> I think, I think for they Chuck, can even come back and do a little more simplification on some of their settings. Yeah, I I, I don't disagree. I think uh, I was sharing with my wife. I said, you know, it reminded me back in the day I had a GPS device, you know, from Garmin, and I remember I said, who invented this menu system? This this must be like a Uber engineer. They're not very user friendly, and and I hate to say it, but. I think they, the the XP folks, their menu set up, um, the engineers really uh, had their hand in that. Let me just put it that way. Not as user-friendly as the Knox. <laughs> right. And well, and Knox for some people. Over the years, because if you went back to the Explorer series, they were kind of difficult to manage. And then you went to the e-track and that was a little easier and then the 3030 came out and that had a huge menu field and yeah. paging through it and then all of a sudden they come out with a notch and it is simpler but yet you can really customize programs with that with tone breaks and uh, speeds and it's an amazing machine and I and don't get me wrong, the Deus 2 is better than the previous units they had. Right, no, I was going to say, in terms of the first generation or X35, for some people, the Deus liked certain things just a bit too much that some diggers didn't like so much. Well, the foil issue with it and rusted bottle caps. Yeah, and the early I, one was a, a, an issue here, maybe more in the States than it was in Europe. And, and the reason why they designed that the way they did and it liking thin foil is due to hammered coins being Exactly. Thin. That's yeah. what I was yeah. just going to say. And, I mean, for, for some people that they're not a big fan of the dais, they, like uh, Rob had said, if you're not getting in there and checking some of those options and settings, you're really kind of cheating yourself out. Because for, right. for say, yeah. uh, like a, a good scenario where I will still pull the dais out a lot of times is if I'm looking for a lost piece of jewelry that was a very recent drop, should be right on top of the ground, I won't even really change the settings or anything on the dais i will go into the audio settings and put it into pitch mode and yeah, go to town and it'll nail it every time yeah no 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 listen don't get me wrong okay when i moved to the knox from the simplex and i 
you know, started to develop some tone breaks and stuff. I mean, I leaned heavily on Andy Savish's book to help me right. figure that out. I mean, it's still, for some, is a big leap, but I do agree it's harder. It's harder to do some of that programming. Uh, you know, some of these companies, I mean, think about the iPhone. Phones kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller. <laughs> Then, then, what, then what did they do? They started to make them bigger again. Right. And I kind of, on one of my earlier videos about the ORX and the Deus One, I, you know, uh, shared. I, I actually thought they, I mean, it was plenty small. I, I would prefer, especially having knowing I have to wear, wear readers and, you know, cheaters and stuff, I would have liked a bigger screen. Yeah, that was uh, one of the drawbacks for me. That it is not an easily read screen. It, right. And it's, you know, they've made some improvements volume light. But I will say this. The one thing, though, it is an extremely fast machine. Oh, yes. 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 So it's, you know, and it's newer technology to be expected. But um, but for me, the benefit was it broke through one of my crutches. I was, you know, looking at that darn screen a little too much and not relying on tones enough. Right. Okay. Yeah, but Chuck, Chuck, I don't know if you heard the other thing. I mean, wireless is great, but not when you don't have your cable to make it waterproof. That's correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That but, is a good point. Uh, yeah, I need to talk with you, though. I might want to pick up an, a larger coil for my UK trip. Not sure. There you go. And which trip are you going on? The early one? No, I'm on the, I'm on the seven-day one. I think it's October 7th. Okay. Um, you know, that one there, but, uh, yeah, it'll be a first timer, but, um, yeah, I, I, I told Tim, I mean, you know, go easy on me. I mean, he, he has had such great luck every time he's gone over there. Yes, he has. Yeah. I mean, you going with rushing or are you going with, uh, uh I am, uh, yeah, I'm going with Tim. Okay. There you go. Because I had been scheduled at the first one, and I backed out of that for various reasons uh, uh, that are going on here. As time went along, things came up that I could not make that trip. And yeah, it just I'm wasn't going to be feasible. The following year. I understand. I was trying to get Dylan Wandale to go over there with me, but uh, he couldn't get the time off, unfortunately. Yeah. But maybe here. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, I can make it over to England next year. And uh, right now, England's burning, so they've got yep. problems. Absolutely. I, I, I'll just say this: I'm glad I booked my flight about two months ago as well. Good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the cost is up to now. But, I don't uh, either. I don't even want to I, look. Right, yeah. That's crazy. And uh, so, uh, but England is a fun hunt, and I had fun. I got uh, my second trip over there. I went on the first trip through, went to a My Lab conference, and then after they left the area, the, the hotel, we stayed another eight days. And we went to Bath, and we went to Stonehenge, and we went did a little sightseeing. The wife is a big Downton Abbey fan, and the, the hotel we stayed in is built around a 1490 castle. Well, they gave my lab a little half-acre section they could detect in. After they left, I went to the grounds manager because it is a... Also, a 600, what is it, 680 acres that they own there at that hotel. Yeah, it's a golf course, a Scottish style golf course, and I asked permission. They said I could hunt everywhere except the greens. And I had a blast. Right. And I was learning what to do there at the time. And uh, then I went on the next trip with uh, uh, Ron and. Uh, stayed in the Colchester, one of the barns there, and we yep. were all over the place, and I popped a 1807-3 guinea gold coin. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. That's a and I don't know which unit you're taking with you. I highly recommend the Equinox because that thing is so sensitive to gold, but then again, from what I'm seeing from my customers this year on their Deus 2s, 
it's doing a pretty good job also. Well, I'm going to take both with me. I'll probably use both as well. Yeah. And I have been, you know how it goes. I mean, it, it takes a day or two to get your ear back and when you switch back to the other machine. But uh, in part, that's why I want to kind of go back and forth a little bit. But one one funny thing, I know they, you know, they suggest, hey, you should bring a gift over for the the uh, owner, the family, the barn, and so forth. I'm trying to think of metal detecting, what kind of gift. So came up with the perfect idea. I don't know if they're willing to cooperate, but uh, Phil and Shannon's cookies, the Bortner cookies. Ah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we could take a batch of those over to the U.K. is what I'm thinking. Yeah. Well, I, I will prime you on something uh, over there. They're... Uh, if you're expecting to get any ice in any water, you don't. You get still or you get sparkling. Um, <laughs> and uh, if you ask for iced tea, they give you this odd look. Yeah. So I actually taught the gal at the at the restaurant what iced tea was. And I asked <laughs> for a glass of ice, and I got two cubes in the bottom. Mm, okay. I said, well, what I'm doing is taking your hot tea and pouring it over ice, and that doesn't cut it. Fill the glass with ice. So she went to the bartender, and he scooped her in there and filled it with ice, That's and right. uh, I could make iced tea. That's hilarious. I'm, go. I'm going to kind of start with beer, and then I'll go from there. And a lot of their beers are served room temp. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, no, when in Rome, we'll see how it goes. But I'm there looking forward to yeah, it, it, you'll enjoy yourself immensely, and uh, going to the pubs in the evening is fun, and and uh, the hunt, uh, plan on getting up early and rolling out early and being out there all day, and then get back clean up and head down to a pub and uh, have a bite to eat, and there's a couple really good ones in the area, and uh, you and Tim, uh, you and Tim will have a good time with your crew there. Yeah, looking forward to it. I'll be posting plenty of pictures and doing the videos, but appreciate all the, the tips and suggestions, Chuck. Oh, you'll have a good time. You'll have a good time. That's that's fun. I'm, now I'm swinging over from hunting in Illinois and Iowa to firing up the PI units and heading to Alaska, and that, that's a whole different world. Right. Oh, well, we're looking for that. I, we'll see if you have the same kind of luck you did last year. That was incredible. We hope so. We yeah. hope so. That's all I can say about that. Uh, watching the weather closely right now, and Nome's getting hammered with a uh, pretty good storm right now and high winds and rain, And but uh, it's supposed to pass on through and be out of there So by the time we get up there. But uh, I've been well, there when it does that, and they even had some snow flurries the other day. So. Oh, my God. Hey, welcome safe. to summer in Alaska. Right. Yeah, exactly. But safe travels and best of luck. Well, thank you. Thank you, but uh, you brought up some good points on that dais, and and uh, th- th- there is a there is a change from if you're using Notkas or Mind Labs jumping into a dais too. Now I think you know depending on what your resources are, if if you're not sure resources are tight, just take a look at the ORX, and that'll introduce you to their whole platform, their technology. This is the XP ORX. It's much more affordable. But, yeah. um, you know, it, it, I, I don't think you can go wrong with, with uh, a knock 600 or an 800. I mean, I highly recommend it. My biggest issue and concern is just with the rest of the stuff, the shaft and the build quality and leakage issues and so on. I, I, I don't, you know, I mean, I, I would recommend both, honestly. But if I had to say anybody right now, if they could wait, because I, I am curious. I, I would hope and expect my lab's going to be coming out with an update or a new machine soon. I don't know. Wait till detect. The I body. know nothing. <clears throat> yeah, that's all I can tell you on that. Uh, last right. week I dropped a dime a little Purple. bit on, uh, and uh, but yeah. I didn't tell them anything. They were asking me everything from going to Alaska to what color it was. I told them it was mauve. But yeah. uh, it, I'm with you. I mean, if, I, if you could wait. If you could wait right now, I would I would probably wait again. But yeah, right. I ordered this last uh, – oh, my gosh. I I think I ordered mine in November of last year and mm-hmm. didn't get it until April. Yep. 
And that was not through Chuck, by the way. And that was a mistake I made. <laughs> Oh, yep, I, I was oh. fortunate and was able to get a lot of my pre-orders pretty quick. And um, there were a couple that came into the game late at that beginning, and they had to wait a little longer, but not too bad. And uh, they're all of them are pretty happy with it. I've had a couple say that they're doing like you were. I was listening to your comparisons. And... Uh, they felt that the, you know, the Knox was laying right in there with it. Right. Well, here's the thing. Even if it's just the same or slightly less, there is a big difference in the age of the technology. Now, like I said, you have to look. First of all, just ask yourself, is this person biased to what degree? Are they trying to convince themselves they made the right decision? That kind of thing. It is a much more expensive machine. Now, there are reasons. And there are benefits some could come up with. You have to decide, ultimately, if that's worth it for you. If you're not doing a lot of beach hunting or if you're not doing a lot of traveling, you know, if you don't have concerns about the water quality. I think, you know, a great buy right now is the 600, the Knox 600, quite honestly, because they you can still get the packages with the small yep. coil. You know, right. to hedge your bet. But if, if, if I were, like, brand new and somebody were like, oh, gosh, what do I buy? And I'm in this kind of a range. Honestly, if I could, if you could wait a little bit, I would recommend that. Yep. So we'll see what's coming out from Mind Lab. It's hopefully going to be announced over in England, and yep. uh, uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see exactly what that is. I can't say much about it. Well, very cool. Right. So it'll be a good time. Well, I'll let you guys we'll finish up. Happens. I'll get out of your way. Good talking with you again, Rob. And uh, it's neat that you got that uh, that camper, and you can get out and hit the road and travel and meet a lot of people. Absolutely, absolutely. Good talking with you, Chuck. All right, take care, guys. Thanks, Josh. Thanks Everybody for calling, Chuck. Week. Talk to you all later. Safe oh, travels by the way, to Alaska. Guys, I'm going to try. I'm going to try either the Sunday or the Wednesday while we're up there making it out to where I can do a call-in for you. All right. All right. I'll mm -hmm. uh, talk to you about that later. Night off. Bye-bye. All right. And now that we know the phone lines work, uh, if we haven't kept Rob too long already, let me see. What time is it? I don't know. Uh, yeah, we're, we're getting nope. up there. but uh, No problem. And Josh, no problem. We'll go ahead and uh, let some some people try to call in and chat with you for a minute and see if they don't find themselves surprised. All right. And we'll yeah, we'll Chuck, see we'll Chuck see how that goes. Guy, and I'm eager to hear about his new you know this next trip up in Alaska. Um, I mean, I hope to do that sometime. I would love to go up there. Oh yeah, I mean Alaska is. Uh, well, basically for Chuck, it's his home away from home. He definitely likes Alaska. Yeah, yeah. But that's that's definitely good. I and have he's... been there sand fishing, and I have a good friend of mine, high school friend, uh, one of my best friends, lives up in Anchorage. He's a pilot. And uh, went up there salmon fishing with him. And let me tell you, I mean, I do enjoy fishing, but it's a completely different type of fishing, a different type of tackle, presentation, everything. And this is years ago I went up there, but um, it was incredible. And But the, I have to say, the location with which we were fishing, there's all these paths going back and forth. And I asked my buddy, I'm like, oh, there are these people paths? I mean, I didn't know there were so many people here that fish. And he looked at me and said, yeah, th th those are bear paths. So the bear, of course, come down to the river's edge and feed on the salmon. And it, right. It put a, the, hair, the hairs on my back were raised just a bit. Let's put it that way. Yeah, well, you know, they like to eat good, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, but that was a, an incredible trip up there. But, um, you know, at the time I did not detect, but um, I'd love to do one of Chuck's trips at some point. But Right. Yeah, especially, I mean, if if this trip goes like last summer's trip, uh, I imagine they're going to be booked up pretty well. Yeah, I I mean, I think, uh, 
some of the finds that they discovered rival things that you we see on some of these gold digger shows and stuff on TV. I mean, um, I don't know. You know, I'm going to say I don't think that's luck. I think these guys know what they're doing up there. But uh, I'm, I'm, it's just fun to hear the story and uh, be part yeah. of it, even if, you know, from a distance. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, sometimes, you know, for some of us, we have to uh, kind of live vicariously. Well, Josh, do we have a caller that could maybe be surprised at all? So far, we don't. Boy, uh, so it, it, it could be to someone's benefit, don't you think, to dial in and talk with one of us? I think it could be. I think they would find themselves very pleasantly surprised. Yeah, let's give them a minute or two. Otherwise, and, you know, with that that carrot of enticement. Uh, but I'll leave it up to you when to to end here. But um, I am looking forward to. I, I will also say the end of uh, mosquito season here in Wisconsin. Man, they are ferocious here right now. Oh yeah, yeah. There there's something else everywhere. I mean, we've got a pl- I've got a permission a uh, little ways from here that. Uh, they're a special type of breed up there. I swear, those things have tail numbers on them. I mean, they have to get tower clearance. They're oh my they're God. really yeah. something yeah. else. I you know I've got uh, I had this permission for today and tomorrow at the local scout camp, and this is an old camp. It was founded in 1917. We pulled silver from there, all kind of cool rings and stuff. Anyway, I was there this morning filming this video on kind of an open field finished the video and just wanted to you know do some hunting i went back into the camping area and i was bathed in mosquito repellent okay (laughs) right oh uh Um, 217 you're live who do we have hi this is shannon well hello shannon (laughs) shannon cookie (laughs) partner actually i know that's phil (laughs) phil makes the cookies right Yes, they are Phil's famous cookies, not mine. Okay. I mean, far be it from me to bestow the nickname of Cookie on him. I, I, I don't want to go there, but maybe, <laughs> maybe that's a nickname he already has. I don't know, but uh, how you doing, Shannon? <laughs> good, good. And Shannon's been on quite a winning streak lately, but she doesn't find herself surprised here. What am I winning? Well, maybe, maybe we need to surprise her, Josh. Oh, you, you think we should surprise her? I think we should. Well. Oh, I win a day of two? <laughs> <laughs> Close. No, no, you are a... Did I did I not do I not recall correctly that Phil didn't Phil win a Mind Lab Equinox at uh... he he did and Shannon just recently last week or the week before won a Simplex. Oh, you 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 need to learn those machines, Shannon. Come on before you move up to the day. Right, he sold the Mind Lab, so I'm going to trade for- the Simplex in. Well, in in his defense, he had the headphones for it. Yeah, I don't have the headphones. <laughs> are, are you trying to stay a, a Nocta family? Are you guys trying to kind of like maximize one detector? Well, I haven't decided yet. I'm going back and forth between the, the Nox, Nox or the Legend and the Legend. Yeah. I say yeah, go for I the legend. I, I I've picked the legend up at, at some of the events. I haven't, you know, I don't own one and stuff. But boy, it. I, I will say the thing about them is they get it right. It may take a couple updates and so on, but they get it right. Um, mm-hmm. my only hesitation with the legend is it's the same housing, the same body as the simplex, which I found a little heavy, a little heavy, but the price is incredible. Well, I'd, what uh, what machine were you using today, Shannon? Uh, Simplex. That's what I have. And how? Also, you didn't take Phil's Equinox. No, he stole my ticket. 
<laughs> yeah. So what did you find <laughs> with the simplex today? Today, nothing. I was 100 degrees. Yeah, that's the way it was around here, too. So you're you're sitting inside soaking up the AC and maybe eating some cookies. No, I actually just had a root beer float. <laughs> Oh, okay. I was going to say, we, we've kind of laid off of the food topic a little bit, so hopefully it's not snack time yet. Oh, I already have the root beer float. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice. Well, since since it is such a hot day out today, and apparently you've got a surprise coming. Sweet. Yes. So, so but, Shannon... Would then would, your go ahead, Josh. I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, would you like to know what it is so everyone in the chat can go, Oh, now why couldn't I have picked up the phone and called? Or would you just like yeah. it to be a surprise? Oh, no, let's tell everyone. Well, then, Rob, I'll let you do that. Okay, so yeah, send your email or your shipping address, you know, that contact info to either Josh or me, but we're going to send to you a one ounce silver American Eagle coin and a prize package, a prize package of several other really interesting mystery items that uh, are almost as good as that silver coin. Oh my goodness. Wow. I'm glad I called. That's, See, what, what is now, that? That's like one fifteenth of a. No, actually, let's see. We have to we have to do the math on that. Maybe one one tenth, one fifth of a XP day. I don't know what's the spot price of silver, Josh. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, that's that's probably you. more like a a two hundred and fifteenth. <laughs> yeah, <I think laughs> not so. that think bad. So. But uh, yeah, so so thanks for calling in, Shannon, and congrats. And for everyone yeah, else in so. the chat that's using their virtual leg to kick themselves right now, everybody had an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> I but can't this, see the chat because I'm on the phone. <laughs> li- literally, Shan- Shannon was dialing for a dollar here, dialing for dollars. I don't know. There was a, there was a show years ago uh, when I was growing yeah. up called Dialing for Dollars. Do you remember that? Now, I I will say, just to be on the safe side, there is a good possibility that there are some states that that's illegal in. Dialing for dollars. <laughs> dialing for dollars. I, I Believe it or not, I think it was a bowling show. And you would dial <laughs> in, and this person would, like, throw a bowling ball, and they may or may not get a strike. But if you call it in and guess what they they did. At any rate, this was in Pennsylvania, so it might have been a regional thing. But uh, – yeah, but no, cool, Shannon. Um, thanks, and uh, glad you and Phil are enjoying the hobby, and it was great meeting you guys at Swing Into Summer. Absolutely. Yeah, that's right. Back at you. <laughs> Such a fun event. Did I miss out on anything in, like, my description? I mean, what did you guys enjoy? I think more than anything, the people actually getting to see everyone face-to-face and just have fun. That was the best part to right. me. Putting faces to names or wigs to heads. And... <laughs> right. Because <laughs> there, there is a picture floating around somewhere of Phil in that green wig as well. Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> I have seen that. So you, you may have to, you know, Josh, next year you, you might need to show up like with one of those like wedding booths with all kind of like costume stuff. You may have started something here. Well, like I said, uh, apparently Tam already has the next hairstyle picked out. And uh, apparently we've got... uh, We've got Phil on with us, too. Oh, no. Okay, I'm getting off of here. (laughs) Okay, first of all, guys... You know, it was wonderful meeting you guys at the event. That was a blast. Number two, go ahead and put my name on the envelope. <laughs> 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 <Just> one. 
And number three, Rob, how many dozen cookies would you like? Oh, my gosh. I tell you what. I think and are, you, dozen, are you allowed to take those on a plane? Well, um, that I do not know. I think so. I think so. I mean, they're, you know, they're going to ask me if I'm bringing any fresh fruit stuff or if I visited a farm recently. But I think if the answer to both of those are no, we'll be okay. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Well, and, um, Phil, if you, if you when, do this. Unless I, it's a I cookie will, farm. We will have a video of these guys taste testing the Bortner cookies, okay? That sounds wonderful. Um, give me plenty of warning, but when Shannon sends you her email, go ahead and send me your address and the date that you're leaving, and I'll make sure I bake up a couple, three, four dozen for you. All right. All right. We, we'll throw plenty of preservatives in there, but I'll do that. I'm looking forward to it. It'll be fun. Oh, uh, we don't use preservatives in our cooking. <laughs> <laughs> So, no, no, I, I have to ask: has, has the has the nickname Cookie ever surfaced for you? I don't know. No, no, it has not. Um, Having met you in person, that doesn't surprise me. You, you would not be somebody. Yeah. I would. It looks like a cookie. Right. He were, he doesn't seem like a cookie guy. No, no. Well, and if it does come up, at least I hope it's Mister Cookie. Mister. <laughs> <laughs> I could deal with Mr. Cookie. There we go. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll, let, let's put it out there and see if the fate, you know, how it aligns. Yep. But, you know, I can I can already thing. see it now. The next time he's in the chat, everyone's going to be going, hey, Mr. Cookie, what's up? Well, you know, yeah. Josh, if you think about it, we got, we got three major things going on here. It's like what kind of wig or, you know, garment, whatever, are you going to have? What kind of product will Gary Penta produce? And now, will there be a new cookie specifically to the next event? Right. Oh, I've got quite a few recipes. Oh, yeah, I'll make up a different different style. They're even there better. We, well, and, we and all I can say is if, <clears throat> if Tam holds to what she's saying, you thought you couldn't miss me the last time. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Literally, it's going to be beyond sight and sound. Uh, yeah. You're you're going to see me from down the road. <laughs> <laughs> plenty. We have to rename it. Plenty of sight and a little bit of sound. Then. Uh, yeah. It, well, I don't know because it it sounds. I mean, it'll it'll be it'll be so colorful. It's loud. <laughs> oh my god! I love it. I absolutely love it. Looking for. But man, so and I'm fun. sure somebody in the chat's probably going now. Where did they find a neon plaid wig? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Hey, you gentlemen! Hey, you gentlemen! Have a wonderful night. Great show as usual, Josh. Well, thank you, sir. All right, have a good night. All right, Thanks, congratulations Bill. to Shannon. Have her send that address out. Yes, I will. Okay, I'm still on here, but I'll get off of here. Thank you so much, Rob and and Josh. Thank you. Pleasure meeting you guys. Good talking with you again. All right. Bye-bye. Well, good calls, good information, great people, great people good guests, uh, and, a, and a great prize. Shannon ought to be absolutely thrilled. And a great show, Josh. Thanks again to everything you do, man. I so enjoy listening to these. I listen to them a lot on podcasts. I, I love it that way. But uh, appreciate everything you're doing. And, and and for those listening, thanks for dialing in. Yeah, absolutely. Or if they're listening to the archive, thanks for dropping by. Because I know there's plenty of them that listen to the archives as well. I uh, I actually got called out on that this week. Because I oh, had right? mentioned on, I had mentioned on Sunday's show we we've been working this whole smoking food and outdoor cooking into the shows and into the group, and oh, I... I had mentioned on Sunday's show that yeah. there had been a gentleman that had posted up. It was uh, two pork shoulders and smoked mac and cheese, and to look at it, you were just 
drooling. You could just about smell it through the screen. It looked phenomenal. Well, I had to mention the post Sunday. And I had mentioned, I wasn't sure, you know, maybe the guy listens to the archives. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he saw people posting up food and going, hey, I'm game for getting in this and threw up this post. Well, uh, Monday night then, he came back into the Mental Detecting Beyond Sight and Sound group and commented on his post. And he says, by the way, yes, I do listen to the archives, usually on Monday evenings when I'm at work. And imagine my surprise when you're talking about my post. Very cool to give me a shout out. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And I, I think he has since posted something about smoked spaghetti. Uh, no, Which, actually, that was Ohio Relic Hunter that made that post. Oh, that was – so you've started a trend here. Um, yeah. But, no, I, I saw I saw that second one, and I'm like, oh, my God. I'll just tell you very quickly, if anybody's listening and they're not familiar with something called drunken spaghetti – Drunken spaghetti. It's an Italian dish. There's an Italian name for it that escapes me right now. But it's a great summer dish. It's nothing like spaghetti we think of. It's cold. You actually mm -hmm. cook your spaghetti in a half water, half wine mixture. And it's um, served and grilled. It's actually um, sautéed with uh, fresh vegetables that are in season. But Google that if you're not familiar with it. Drunken spaghetti. There's right. a ton of different recipe varieties, but it's a great summer meal. There, There's going to be people going, yep, they're into it now. It's almost snack time. Yeah, and yeah we exactly. uh, Bill had posted up uh, that that smoked spaghetti that he had done. He he had posted up a meatloaf. He's, he's posted up a few things. We've posted up smoked burgers and bacon-wrapped pickle spears. And Mike Boyles is posting up food and... Uh, this weekend, I believe we're posting up a couple of twice smoked hams. It'll be chipped and uh, more of them bacon wrapped pickle spears because they were a huge I mean, hit. You, you've you've hit a nerve here, so I mean, you might want to think about just a show about you know food favorites here because I tell you what, we we detectorists like a lot of things and we're good at several things, but That's I found right. that a lot of people like to cook. Yeah, and diggers got to eat too. <laughs> You know, we burn a lot of calories. Exactly. And usually, we like to eat well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, From what I understand, you had a great burger or something on the way back from uh, Swing into Summer, right? Um, no, we, we didn't really stop it. Well, we... I take that back. We did stop after the hunt. Yeah, it might not have been a burger, but I thought you guys stopped at a a place or you met up with some people on the way back i thought we we went back to the hotel and then we went up to the iron spike and w many of us got burgers uh tam got this uh i believe it was a a uh, grilled mac and cheese sandwich and that sounds a little different but man it it sure did look good yeah. Well, you're making me hungry, Josh. Between that and uh, Bill's uh, Mr. Cookie's um, famous creations here, I'm, 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 I think it's time to get something to eat. Yeah, smoked food and chocolate chip cookies and root beer floats. It sounds like oh it's my... snack time. Indeed. Well, hang in there with me for a minute, Rob, and we'll get out of here. For everyone else, obviously, Rob Rizzo, the history digger, Check him out on YouTube, and if you check out his timeline on Facebook, you'll also see his other YouTube channel, I believe is called The Adventure Beyond. Uh, Close, Josh, Beyond the Adventure, but... Uh, there we go. Yeah, it's on the timeline, but yeah, appreciate it. So make sure and check that one out, too. Subscribe. He's, he's got some interesting videos going on there as well. Until the next one, folks, uh, well, actually, the next one, I believe, will be Wednesday, because I'm under strict orders from the missus. I am not live Sunday. <laughs> so, we're going to roll on out. Have a wonderful evening, folks.